kick off with Let's the music. Roll. We'll roll in. Great. Good evening and welcome to The Joust. My name is Nagy. I'm here as always with my co-host Liam McNeil. But Joustas, we have a very special guest for you today. Uh, this man made his debut for the Knights in 2015. Uh, he went on to for, to fit himself as a regular first grader. And uh, he was our leading try scorer last year in 2018 with nine tries. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Lockie Fitzgibbon to The Joust. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, it's it's a pleasure. Yeah, Thanks yeah, for pleasure. coming on. No, my pleasure. <clears throat> now, the, when I had a look at that, it was a sort of surprising um, last season. I know you went over for, for quite a few, but uh, for, for nine tries, um, it, was, it was something pretty extraordinary, especially for a back rower. I think there was maybe only um, a couple other back rowers in that sort of league. Like that was the same as Tommy Turbo and uh, James Desco and Brett Morris uh, for nine tries last year. It was it was yeah, yeah. It was it was quite something. How did it feel to score nine? Oh, that's a pretty interesting stuff. I didn't know that, <laughs> but um, it's always all right playing off the back of some some good players. And um, we had it clicking there for a while last year. And um, it was just a shame we didn't win as many games as we liked last year. But to get over the line, you know, it's, it's obviously a bonus. But Winning would be better. Yes, <laughs> it certainly would. Now, you started your, your football career um, in Sydney, but then you at, at around age 10, you moved to Newcastle, uh, and mm. you, st- you were playing with South Newcastle. How was it playing for South? Yeah, I did. I came up here when I was uh, yeah, about 8 or 10. I'm not sure the age. It was around that age. And yep. I started, yeah, at South, moved um, into Merriweather. So the old Mighty Lions is the, it's the local town, a uh, local team around town. And um, Yeah, so came came through there from... You know, about under tens to up until under seventeens. Um, we had a pretty strong side. I think we won it was something ridiculous, something like eight out of nine grand <laughs> grand finals. Yeah. Like we had we had a stack, so I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but up until fifteens, um sorry, up until fifteens. Uh, after fifteens, sixteens, seventeens, we actually had Sione and Tavita Pangai playing for us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, they were two years younger and they, they were just as good as or not quite as good as they are now but obviously <laughs> yeah. they, they were they were young stars so um yeah we had a pretty good side coming through the ranks and nice. um yeah we 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 kind of all kind of broke off after that 17s because a lot of us went into you know the sg ball systems and then from then on from then on so um you know it was, it was a good team to come through i got a, like plenty of good mates out of it and 17s lifetime. is such a tough year though i remember my i actually played for south in under 17s too division two yeah, right. and uh, <laughs> that seemed to be the year that all the boys in my team discovered drinking and fighting well yeah <laughs> so, uh, we, that, that, there's a bit of that going on yeah. <laughs> a month a month winning a lot of games <laughs> so we bombed out <laughs> terribly combination <laughs> we we did not succeed at all yeah, yeah. there was you still keep in touch with south um, yeah i do i was actually at their season launch um two weeks ago we me and Sione both um being you know, local juniors um, went to their season launch and, and just did a bit of a, bit of a Q and A there, which is good. And I got uh, two of my two of my housemates actually play um, for CS currently, so uh, yeah, it's good. I, I like CS. Keeping yeah. it local, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, many players uh, start to think about their NRL career uh, towards the end, and they start to think about life after football uh, as their playing career is winding out. But uh, but you obviously gave a lot of thought uh, because when you just left school, you went uh, to Newcastle Uni for a project management degree. Is that right? Yeah, we've got doing construction management, so I've just finished that now. I'm just um, in the process of getting to the next graduation, wherever that may be. <laughs> and how was the club with that? They seem to clubs do a lot of stuff for players chasing education these days are they pretty understanding yeah well uh, when i was coming through um under 20s so for the two years there i was i was studying full time and then under 20s of course is only part-time footy so i managed to get you know two years in there the four-year course and then um and then the two years after that when i went into full time you know that they, they're obviously good with it if, if you need time and newcastle uni also unreal with it they give you they give you extra time when needed and whatnot was it, uh, was it, did you have, like, when, as you're getting closer to your NRL career, it was, was the temptation to be like, oh, I'll just put this on hold for, for, you know, for yeah. the interim and then, and then I'll, I'll have a look back in six or seven years. Yeah, there was, but at, at the same time, I wasn't a big star coming through, so I, I didn't know when, where the NRL path was going to take me, so I thought, you know, I might as well get it done in case you never know how long it's going to last, and then I don't want to be, um, then put back another two years, so to speak, so, and I had another good mate, um, who I also currently live with, who's doing it, who was doing, was at the same point in um, university with me. So we'd do a lot of it together. So it wasn't as um, laboring, I should say, doing it on my own because we were doing <laughs> yeah, it together. Yeah. So it, it helped. 
Yeah, I remember seeing you around Newcastle City Hub, uh, some of the late yeah, nights. some late nights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's taken me 10 years so far to do a three-year course, so you've yeah. done very well. Oh, well <laughs> you've well, done very well. I think six years, six, seven, I don't know. <laughs> no, anyway. But it's, it's just done. a guide, the years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 no one's really it. cracking down on it. That's why I nah. didn't do too well at uni. No one's <laughs> nah. there kicking my ass. <laughs> no, nah, it's good. Um, many people would have a look at your career coming through, you know, SG Ball, um, NYC, uh, New South Wales Cup, and and then now see you're a regular first grader, all for the all for the same club, and think, oh well, you were destined to play first grade for mm. the Newcastle Knights. Um, but you, you know, did you consider other options around, uh, you know, when you were starting off or when you were in under twenties? Yeah, I think so. There was like like I said before, I was by no stretch of the imagination this superstar coming through. I was just this. Um, as you said, a local boy come up through the grade and, and managed to string, you know, the first year of 20s, I probably played probably only 15 games and, and I probably wasn't seen as, you know, that regular starter. And then and then the following year, I managed to, you know, break way into the starting side and, and we had a pretty successful year. And um, still at that point, I wasn't I wasn't tossing up whether, like I didn't have a contract from the year after 20s. Um, so at the end of that 20s year, I actually, I got a pre-season contract. It wasn't even a full-time contract. They, what they do is a pre-season contract. You get November, December, January. And then, so it, it, nothing's guaranteed from, from that point on. Um, there was a time there where I wanted to go overseas. I wanted to... Um, yeah, you were looking at going to America. Yeah, I'll say uh, a couple of boys who are a bit older than me um, went to um, Clemson and they played rugby over there. And that, that was yeah, so that was an idea I had in my head, and a couple of other boys. There was about there was two more of us that you know were tossing up the idea. We we made contact with you know a couple of schools over there, South Carolina as well, and and that was that was a I, I sat down, and I was genuinely weighing up whether to you know go overseas or um, you know and just and just muck around with the boys you know <laughs> go go semester overseas and and have a bit of a crack over there or or you know to try to push and make it as a um a first grader in a system where you know i was, I was really only guaranteed a two month um kind of train and trial so um as it was i, I chose the train and trial obviously and <laughs> yeah and that's all worked out so i'm i'm, I'm happy about that it worked out sure. beautifully for <laughs> yeah. us yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah in 2015 uh danny badiris is caretaker coach and yep. and uh uh, later in the season, you were playing uh, down at St George uh, in Cogra, I believe, uh, yeah, and, and you and you get the uh, the call up. Uh, what was that like? Yeah, again, it was it was um, off the back of we had a pretty strong side that 2015 year, um, and I think it was round 20, 21. I'm I'm not sure. I, I should know this. So <laughs> that's bad. We, we should have um, done our research as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it was 21. It was 21. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and I remember Bedsy calling me through the week they didn't have to name a 21 back then as they do today so um i think they just named an 18 and whatever whatever else is they can just chuck in so yeah right. um and i think he called me it, we played on could have been a sunday i'm not 100 percent again i probably should know down <laughs> <in Cochrane. laughs> and um i think he called me on the uh, a wednesday or a thursday to let me know i had to be at captain's run and i was thinking uh oh, yeah right i i had done it before i'd, I'd done the old captain's run and I was actually with a couple of mates and we were at um, one of their houses and they were all having a couple of beers and I think I was, I think I had my, maybe my first beer, I don't even know. And then he got the call and I was just, yeah, moseying on. And then he told me and then I was in shock for about a good, I reckon half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, well, no, sorry, he had only told me to come and then I was, and then, um, so I was like, yeah, right. And then he told me the next day that, um, that it was David Falonga at the time. Yeah, it wasn't going to make it, and then that was when it um, was pretty. It hit me pretty hard. I was in shock for about a good half an hour to an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah it was a tough day that day as well. <laughs> I can imagine. Mm. We uh, we actually had a good friend of yours and a good friend of the show, mm. Nathan Ross, on last year uh, regarding your debut because you debuted together. Yeah. Uh, he had a little bit of something to say, a bit of controversy about that debut. Yeah, Rossi's uh, Rossi's a bit unhappy. We think <laughs> I should have worn white. That's Should've a good idea. Yeah. Though. So I just thought I was coming in here, so I wanted to give like a little bit of background on a few things that's inside the Knights. It's like our baggy red and blue hat, and it's got I don't know what camera to show to. But yeah, it's got like your <laughs> debut number on it and you get given it uh, at the end of season presentation night and it's something special. So I wear mine to golf days and stuff like that. I think a lot of people <laughs> kind of just put theirs back in their satchel. But 
um, yeah, it's a good bit of gear, and I'll probably pass it on to my kids, and hopefully it goes through my family um, for a bit. But yeah, it was a pretty special moment when I, when I went up on stage and I got to receive it. Obviously, with one of my best friends, Lachlan Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbon, he, he debuted the same same game that I did. But yeah, to be up there on stage with a few of the boys and get our baggy red and blues, it's yeah, something That's special. That's amazing. That's not something I'd really thought about with Fitzgibbon coming on. So I guess over the last year or so that he's actually been in the first grade squad for so long, well, debuting yeah, we, with yourself. We debuted in the same round down there at um, oh. Cogra against St. George. And I'm actually ropeable. So he's 2-6-1. And I'm two six two, <laughs> but I started the game and he come on for about eight minutes, but still got a lower debut number than me. I'm reply. filthy. You think uh, well, that's warranted? Maybe uh, have you considered maybe even a, a change of number with uh, with Rossi? Who cares what he says? <laughs> retired. <laughs> he has no pull anymore. He's he's retired. He's out of the game. He's no more. But nah. that's it. Conversations um, over. Com- nah. Yep. Good. No, it, yeah, it, it is quite funny. Um, <laughs> Rossi was named, and I was. 20 that day and yeah I'm, I, it, it must have been just alphabetical well, that's the only yeah, that's what we yeah we ended up we we talked it through with rossi and we we think it was alphabetical and um but it, yeah <laughs> but you think maybe because he was first in but he was also first out as well yeah, now yeah, the yeah, retirement, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you still got the baggy red and blue laying I around do, i do i got in a um we, get, we got him in a glass box as well oh. so uh, we got a color you can take it in and out of rossi just rather where he's old <laughs> i'll keep mine in there but um you yeah, know it, it was a special day for both of us um like you said, way back 2015, it was probably pretty, pretty long ago now. Rossi was a or young fella, or 26, <laughs> I think. Back then, yeah, so. yeah, I think it was 26 when um, he made his debut. Yeah, no, it was a pretty special day. But um, yeah, the the right the the claim to fame now is you know how many tries he he ended up with. So uh, I just got to surpass that amount, and then I got. Oh, the, it's easy. Got that was right that's not asking much at all. Against the dog, <laughs> yeah. we, we always have these. You know, <laughs> You'd be up not. there already. You know, nine tries last year. I think seven the year before. I think I, think I got tw- uh, twenty odd. Yeah, right. Yeah. You'd be catching him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's got plenty of time to do it in, too. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> so uh, watch out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that number of his 262 is actually a, a bit of a coincidence number because it's also the number of the Murray's Novocastrian Ale uh, for... That's it. For 262, lovely beer, lovely it's beer. It's a wonderful beverage, very it, nice. It's very nice to drink while watching the football. Now, mm. the, the 2015 side that you were in, in with New South Wales Cup was a particularly stacked side of, of rugby, of NRL talent. Uh, uh, a lot of players were sort of winding up their careers and uh, they played with in that side, including the likes of Clint Newton, yeah. um, uh, Matt Hilda, uh, even I think Tamana Tahu got around around then, or it might have been the year before. It might have been the year before, yeah. yeah. So when, when I come through it, so in our 20s... Um, the year before 2014 we actually we were outright we we had that comp i think we ended up maybe 10 points minor <laughs> premiers in front of anyone we had like the joe tarpanies jake memo sioni um and those likes coming through and um then we all transitioned into that um 2015 side new south Wales cup side and then the likes of we had clint newton in there which was you know he's an old head and he's a great of our game and he, he taught actually a lot of us about what it what it is to be a first grader coming out through twenties, and um, you know we, we had likes of him. We had, we even had George Nadir was our assistant coach. He, he came <laughs> yeah, back out yeah, of retirement. Right. Yeah, yeah he, he played a couple of games. Um, um, yeah, so we, we had a pretty good side that year, and we went on a good run towards the end of the year and um, managed to yeah win it. It was just unfortunate the next week you versus the Queensland Cup side. Mm. And we probably didn't take it as serious. Well, as I was going to say, is there as we should have. is there a fair bit of celebration going on in between those two? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we thought New South Wales Cup. That's what we play. We yeah. won it. That was it. But um, you know, we rocked up the next um, game like, to win, obviously. But we're probably a bit underdone, to be honest. So it would have g- been the same. That was against the Walker Brothers team, wasn't it? Yeah, the Jets, was that, it? Yeah. That, that was when they first. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Not, that was with when they were first coming onto the scene they used to throw all the trick plays yeah. have you seen them yeah, play yeah, they're, like, they're trying some really different yeah, styles they, of football a lot of possession based stuff isn't it they uh, yeah they it's hard to explain without watching it they just drop people on uh, just, they try to hold on the footy as long mm. as they can they just throw it out you know throw it out their ass and, and just play some footy that's, you know. <laughs> that sounds awesome <laughs> in 2015 yeah. when you made your first grade debut uh, and as you said previously you had a, uh, it wasn't like you went straight into regular first grade mm. you, you really it was 2017 the back end was your uh, your, your breakthrough yeah. uh, season so wh- what was it like in between that time where you had played first grade before you might have been selected a few more times in that period but you couldn't cement a spot yeah so the, the back end of 2015 
I re-signed for another two years. And then um, coming into the 2016 year is when um, Brandy took over. Um, I played, I was, that, that following year, I think I was 18th man for round one. And then I played the, f- the next four. And, you know, I wasn't in real good touch, to say the least. And I found myself back in reserve grade, which, you know, it was probably right at the time, you know. Um, I had a lot to learn and, and a lot to improve on. And I played, yeah, New South Wales Cup right up until, I think it was around 8, 2017, which, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a New South Wales Cup veteran. <laughs> 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 Anything over 50 games, I, I, I like to say to the boys, Jam, I'm like, the Dan Safs who's never played a reserve grade game. I don't know, I don't know what it's like. <laughs> they haven't uh, been through the slog, they, nah, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, um, nah, but yeah, yeah. So I, I did play a bit of cup and, and I enjoyed playing cup. It's it's good footy and you learn a lot playing reserve grade against, um, especially being a young a young bloke like I was. And um, in a real re- rebuilding phase as we were, um, you know, it, it was hard playing first grade and, and, and you had to play you know, decent footy week in, week out. And it probably took me a while to realise that, probably a, over a year to, to realise what it actually took to um, to play consistent, you know, first grade footy. And, um, yeah, I I finally, thank God, worked that out in <laughs> 2017. <laughs> so, yeah, midway through 2017. So, from then on, it, it's been, um, you know, it's been a, a good ride and, and a bit of a tough ride, for sure. There was... Uh you seemingly have, have ticked every box in your career as far as progressing through the grades. Mm. You find yourself now as uh, as a regular back rower. Uh, what's the next goal? Is it hard, like when you when you're there now and you've you've sort of been working towards playing for this uh, this mm. first grade side? And now you're here. Uh, what, what's the next goal for you? Oh, well, obviously, I'll, like you know, nothing's ever um, a given in in NRL, and especially in you know the side we have this year. Um, I want. I think I'm up to 46 games. I want to reach a 50 game. I think that's a pretty special thing to do in the NRL. I'm not sure of the NRL averages, but I don't think it's it's wor- it's much over 50 games. So. I, th- I think coming from the uh, NYC, there's less than three percent of NYC players oh, play wow. f- over 50 first grade yeah. games. So, so I, I'd, I'd like to get at that mark. That's that's a goal I, I um, want to tick off this year. That's for sure. And um, I want to play finals footy. That's a that's a big thing for me. Um, and down the track somewhere I want I want to play some sort of rep footy but um you know I've got a, I've got a few things to get right especially leading into this year which which hasn't been a good start for myself and 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 the team but um you know if we can get back on track I'm, I'm sure things will start progressing well, there was some suggestion last year that your hair your long hair had been tied a bit to your form is that coming back or are you keeping it nah. high and tight well, well yeah because <laughs> I'm trying to be a long hair guy myself I've I never had, had long hair I had the long hair and then I was strapping long hair and no beard and then Brandy didn't like it nah. <laughs> um, I, it was, I was actually going to keep it and then um, the start of last year I remember being in a training session and, and my elastic band broke <laughs> And um, it got in my face, and um, I actually trained pretty average that day. We were doing a pose session, and I just remember thinking, "I'm not doing this again." And <laughs> I, I was I was in a rut, and I got out, I got back to training, and Danny Levi um, cuts a lot of the boys' hair, and he had his clippers. I was like, just "Can you get rid of it?" <laughs> I regretted it an hour later. But so he's cut a few of the boys' hair he now, hasn't he? Because I know he did Rossi's hair for the shave mm. for Akira as well. Has he got a background in? Um, in hairdressing? No, nah, well, he, he doesn't have a background, but he wants to... He'll progress into being a barber one day, I'd imagine. Oh. I think, yeah, he, he, he likes it a lot. He, he, he enjoys cutting hair, which... Because <laughs> <laughs> that, was, know, that yeah. was a staple of, like, school footy trips and rep footy trips. You'd always have one bloke would bring mm. the clippers, and you'd always... We'd give, give each other haircuts. You'd do the slits in the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah I'd know. Give each other mullets and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was the, great the old fun. footy cut. With the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the footy um, cut. Yeah, no, nah, he, he he cuts a lot of the boys' hair, but um, yeah, he'll he'll probably hopefully, well, I'm assuming he'll probably progress into that one day, if um, yeah, if he wants to, because he, he does a decent job. <laughs> he does do yeah. a decent job. There's well, some tight fades. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, that's his specialty, a fade, huh. skin fade. <laughs> so. That'd be a good nickname for him, mm. skin Danny fade. the skin fade. Skin fade. Levi. Sounds a, <laughs> sounds a bit rude. Mm, I think. Does a bit. <laughs> does a bit. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, you said a focus of yours was uh, defence for, mm. for yourself and improving your um, your tackling technique. Uh, having a look at the stats, you know you were making you were just under ninety percent tackle effectiveness mm. last year. Uh, what area in particular did you think you needed improving on? Oh, I think it's just you know there was a lot of tries last year we scored out in our flanks, um, and in particular 
I was I started on the left and I moved to the right. Um, and an area where I was, I I, I have we you know we leaked a fair bit of points last year and um, I'm not sure the exact stat, but um, a few too many were in and around my edge. Um, you know, and that and that's something as a back rower, you know, you take personally, you, you pride yourself on that edge, not not um, whether it's uh, no one's fault whether it's a half center wing you, you're you're an edge and um yeah so i think that it, our edge defense was was something in particular and um you know that one-on-one that tac- tackle effective is is nice and it's a good stat but if you're not leaking points um on an edge you're doing a good job as a four man to to um to stop those points out wide by you know pressure in halves and and whatnot getting off lead so um, and it goes a long way into winning games. So I think that was, you know, that was my main um, focus, you know, getting that edge D right. And um, I think we've done a decent job to start yeah. the year. But yeah, it seems like it. I think we're only, we're, we're fourth in defence come round five, which, you know, we're not sitting too good, but we're not leaking many points. So. Yeah, it definitely seems like that's improved mm. this year. We're keeping teams to lower lower scores which is nice oh, it that's is where nice. it starts we, yeah, right we got we got to start scoring them so. <laughs> one of the uh in my opinion one of the the, the best uh sort of um, back row defensive back rowers out there in Aiden Guerra mm. um suffered a nasty uh, injury i think we've actually got a, a clip of it Ooh, here yeah. um which was was horrible to watch um uh, for both, you know, so we're going to watch it again at the game. Well, <laughs> it's important to see because there's one of these particularly particularly bad injury. Obviously, you see he goes over on his ankle there. Uh, it was reported today that uh, it's a, a fractured dislocation uh, of the tibia and the fibula. Both of is it really? Okay. Yeah, that's what NRL.com were reporting today. <laughs> okay, um, have you spoken to Aiden? Do you know how he's pulling up? Yeah, I did. I, I went and saw him yesterday actually, um, and I spoke to him this afternoon. He went in surgery uh, about five thirty, so it, oh. It, 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 oh. He's almost in there. So All right. Good luck to Aiden if <laughs> yeah, you're listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a good friend of the show. He listens regularly. Yeah, listens regularly, yeah. The yeah. Italian stallion. Mm. The Italian yeah. son. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing, he's doing good. Um, you know, it, I think there was a positive in it. I don't think um, there was... He dislocated his ankle, from, from what, what I understand, and there wasn't... There was, only, there was a clean break. So I think that's more positive is clean break as opposed oh, to wow. multiple breaks in, in, the, in the leg. So... Um, yeah, poor Aiden. It's not ideal for us and not ideal for Aiden, obviously, but yeah, he's going to be missed over the next it's few It's always months. amazing seeing people come back from broken bones. I mm. think if I broke a bone, I'd just give it up. <laughs> just be gone. Yeah. Just be gone. Cut that arm off. Yeah. It's broken. It's done. <laughs> well, it's good. Jasaf came back this week after his broken um, ankle. So he Jeez, that was quick. Good on him. That's yeah, awesome. He managed to punch out 20 odd minutes, so he'll be better for the run. Yeah. So. It's the Fijians, there's something in the water over there. Yeah. They just heal quicker. Yeah. We're going to take a half time break and we'll be right back with the Jess. Thanks, boys. No, no, no. no, It's it's a coincidence. uh, (laughs) Welcome back to the second half of the Joust. Uh, Now, Lachlan, um, early, I think, in this year for Mental Health Month, uh, you you released uh, your your top 10 favourite albums Mm. uh, to (laughs) wind down to. Um, Do you remember these albums that you said? Because when I found them, I thought it was a little bit surprising for, Mm. you know, uh, a rugged second rower uh, Mm. playing playing football. They just had had some interesting ones in there. And now I'll I'll bring them up if you don't mind. Uh, Taylor Swift, Red. Lover. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I just adore everything she does. Mm. Everything she does, her music, her film clips, everything. She's wonderful. Everything. Is Red the album or the song? Red is the album. Red's the album. Okay. But... uh, I think there's a song as well. Okay, yeah. the album song. Well, is 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 it like the sort of the country feel, or is it just the she has a particularly? You know what? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, there's just something about it. No, she's got, just got it. Well, yeah. I've got three sisters. Okay, and, uh-huh. right, yeah. yeah. So and growing up in a house for four girls, including my mum and my dad, um, <laughs> there was a lot of Taylor Swift and a, a, a lot of influence of what I like. Maybe comes back okay. from from my sisters and growing up, but. Taylor Swift, absolute love. Well, that'll explain the John Mayer as well. Um, John Mayer. Room for Squares album. Uh, one of the greats. Look, there was one that a bit before, I thought it before your time, Usher, Confessions. Yeah. Um, is Another one. <laughs> that's, going, that's going back <laughs> to gone. early 2000s. That's going back to my underage discos at the Sawtell Surf Club, that Sawtell. is. <laughs> I used to go so every year, Sawtell. Oh, t- did you stay at the caravan park? We <laughs> stayed up on... Oh, I don't know that straight. Every year. We're, my, my grandma... Um, has gone to Sawtell every every Christmas since she was a kid, and then my dad, and then us up huh. until we're about 
17. So That's a great part of the world. I it is a there. great part. He's a surf southies off the headland there every every weekend. Yep. Brilliant. I thought you left there when you were like nine. No, I left when I was 12. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Still. But, yeah, but um, who was that? Who was that? Johnny yeah. Mayer. John, no, John Usher. Yeah. Oh, Usher. Usher, yeah. Usher, yeah. yeah. Who, who doesn't like Usher? There is, look, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I have the list here. I'm, I'm picking and choosing. There's some, there's some like... like Ones that I'd expect, Post Malone, um, yeah. and I think there was uh, yeah, Blink One Eight Two, which is uh, which is interesting. But one that really like uh, was a surprise was the Greatest Showman original movie picture soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who doesn't like the Greatest Showman? <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I've oh. heard it's phenomenal. I mm. mean, it's Hugh Jackman performing, and which good. you can't beat that. You, you cannot, cannot beat that. And Zac Efron. I didn't know Zac E was in. Oh God. Was he really? I've been missing out. <laughs> oh. I haven't seen it. Oh. <laughs> Look, I'll, well, I'll be honest with you, Lachlan. Nagy's in no position to yeah. talk about music taste. Well, to be honest with you, I don't mind musicals as well, which it, that's a musical and, you know, I, I enjoy the, um, the musical I'm, side of it. Yeah, love them. I went and I saw know. Mary Poppins on Broadway, one of the greatest right. things I did in my life. It mm. was unreal. This is Absolutely take, This unreal. is taking an odd turn <laughs> that I didn't expect. Yeah, the Sound <laughs> of Music's my dad's favourite movie. Mm. But, so. If I can say one thing, both you... Greatest showman, you won't regret it. Okay, mm. all right. We're gonna check that out for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. it was just uh, no. They were the uh, your recommendations for songs to uh, to wind down to. Wind down. Uh, were there any? Would you have a particular song that you like to maybe wind up maybe before a game? If you've oh. is that a thing in the change rooms, yeah. or is that just like everyone's got their, their headphones on to, to pump up music? Or? Yeah, everyone's got their own um, genres and, and take on how they warm up. But I'm pretty. Um, what's the word? I'm I'm pretty. Sh- what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I'm pretty. Set in my ways, and I got a list which I have to listen to. Same list, same really? same start, same finish on before I go out. So how okay. many? How many's on the list? Well, yeah, it's <laughs> is yeah. it a long list or is it like a? I, s- I start. We get there about two hours early. Um, I probably start with music probably an hour and a half out, and then the, and I, I change up a bit of house music. There's no no particular, and then it goes into a bit a bit darker. I okay. Oh, right. About maybe six songs out, so about half an hour before before we run out. So okay. Yeah. Fill us in. When you say darker, how dark are we going? Nah, not 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 real dark. Like a bit of burzum, some church burning, Norwegian. Cr- not 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 heavy <laughs> screamo. Metal? Yeah, uh, not heavy screamo, but but nineties um, metal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Excellent. It's very interesting. Yeah. The, um, Silver chair is that in there? Like? No, it's, <laughs> chair is act- it's actually not. Yeah, but, um, 90s metal. Oh. It's some interesting bands. You can find that on the NIB website. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll get the list up for you. But, uh, <laughs> I just, do I give away my? my no, you've got to keep, you gotta keep, gotta keep the mystery. You've got to keep a bit uh, of mystery. Yeah. It's your routine. Uh, yeah. Now, every week we do like to do a hats off uh, mm. for a player that we think played particularly well uh, for the the previous game. This is the game against Manly, and we ask you, the audience, uh, and they voted this week. Who is our hats off this week? Where? Now, this week it was put to Facebook uh, for our fans to vote, and I forgot to put it on Twitter. So apologies to all our Twitter fans, <laughs> but KP, our uh, very and Pong Strong got our hats off for the week. He got 64% of the vote, ran for 168 metres. He had six tackle busts and a try assist. And yeah, I thought he had a pretty damn good game. He was unreal on the weekend, off the back of, um, you know, a week which would have been tough for him. Um, he's, mm. he's, it's, he had a family tragedy and, and had to shoot over New Zealand and come back, you know, for captain's run. So he, he didn't have the best prep. And, um, you know, the way he plays, you credit to him. And how good the young kid is for, for only being twenty years of age to to go through what he went through that week and then and then rock up in the in the right headspace to play the way he did, which is, is credit to him. He, he's a superstar. Yeah, he had a beauty. Even though it seems like teams are starting to target him a lot more, it's amazing that he can still you know do what he does and get those try assists and break the line and bust those tackles. It's it's quite something. Mm. <laughs> the kid's amazing. Yeah, he's he something incredible. Is there mm. a player that, you know, a lot of uh, the audience, you know, watching these games, we it's very heavy on stats these days mm. and there's lots of retrospective, especially around Supercoach. People think, oh, look at this and this many points and mm. it's all very tough. Is there someone on the field that you think does the, like, won't, does something on the field that maybe doesn't, uh, wouldn't wouldn't appear in the stats like something those one percenters those one percenters yeah. is there someone each week that you sort of think geez good to have on the side yeah you know it's it's funny from from look from someone who plays super coach and whatnot they they, they judge their you know probably um, how a person played off off that but I think there's nothing more that the coaches hate is hearing about <laughs> super coach <laughs> super coach because <laughs> it doesn't reflect you know off the ball work mm. you know, um, getting to position early setting early you know, talk, um, 
communication and and organising, even for a fullback, oh, that that's a tough tr- kick organising that defensive mm. line. They don't get points for that. But um, you know, I, I don't think it's one player in particular who does little things right. It's about having players in the team who you can you can you stand beside you and and you you know they're gonna like do a good job week in week out. You know, like the Aiden Guerras and and the likes of like Chris Hyington who was here last year, you know, probably wouldn't stat real well on Supercoach, but you know when they're out there, they're never going to let you down, you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like that it's Alan McMahon, the original Knights mm. coach. He was all about, you know, be the player everyone wants to play yeah, with, that so kind of thing. It's about looking around and, and you know, who cares if... Um, I'll, I'll use Heino for an example, scored, you know, 10 points on Supercoach, but every time he's standing next to you and, and, you know, last year you knew he wasn't going to let you down. Mm. So you felt comfortable around them. So, you know, it's, it's those sort of players, I think. And um, as many as you can have them in your side, you know, you, you're doing all right. He seems to come up a lot in these kind of conversations as well. Chris Hyington. He, mm. Con- Connor brought him up as yeah, well. Yeah, Connor Watson brought him up. I've heard other players when interviewed who have played with him. Yeah. He seems to be one of the, you know, the people who everyone seems to love playing with. He was... Uh, well, he, he played 350-odd <laughs> games and... You know, he was never recognised as... A, I don't think he played any rep footy. Like, no, how, how oh, I, I think one or two for England, but that oh, yeah, was about sorry, it. Yeah, yeah. England, sorry. Very yeah, few, yeah. though. Oh, sorry, Hino. No, no. <laughs> sorry, <they're laughs> not, that was rude of me. They're not, they're not very good. So. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but like for a bloke to play that many games, like he's obviously a great player. Who, there's no one who plays... There's not many who play over 300 games. I think. Mm, yeah. Two grand, illustrious. two grand finals, obviously, as well, yeah. Mm. So. He's an absolute... Two grand finals, 25 years apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greats... Uh, um, yeah, blokes like that for sure. Yeah, it's interesting to see how long people's careers are going now. Being a fan of the sport for a little while, it always seemed like thirty was like this sort of mark of like, all right, last contract. But you see people playing well into their mid thirties now, and it's mm-hmm. becoming more and more apparent. These, you know, the great players obviously mm-hmm. rise to the top and and hold this list. But like, you know, um, the, there's just players that seem to be playing that are closer to forty now than thirty. And you think, what's Cameron thirty seven this year? Thirty seven or something, which is amazing, especially given you know how players have gotten bigger and the game's gotten faster and more physical, and yet you yeah. seem to yeah you seem to be seeing players playing longer. It's terrifying. Paul Gallen, uh, even Paul you, Gallen. a good friend of yours, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> legend of our game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, and he's playing. Uh, you know, he's closer to forty than he is to thirty. Do you, mm. Can you uh, knowing what it does to your body after one season? Uh, do you th- could you think this cumulatively could could uh, could go on for for a nu- like ideally for as an example if you live, if you went on to Paul Gallen's uh, playing career you'd be playing for another twelve years mm. in the first grade do you think you could do this <laughs> personally <probably. laughs> I don't think so he's, he's one of the greats of our game so no but it, it'd be an actual interesting um, you know discussion or or uh, um, a study to have from ten years back like how those players, you know, had the effect on the body to, to you know, the last, you know, eight eight mm. years and the effect, like how the game's changed, like body yeah. wise. Is it, I, is I'm it not I'm not sure if it if less impacts ten years ago the way the the game was and there was probably less wrestle. I'd imagine probably more more beat each other up, but <laughs> uh, like it's it's hard to say. Yeah, and 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 the, in the modern game, there's more wrestle. You know, probably more impacts, you know, more high speed kind of stuff. Mm. It'd, it'd be interesting to, to see for sure. But in terms of, I don't see myself for another 12 <laughs> years. That's it. I feel yeah. like I'm... But who knows? <laughs> who knows? I feel like I age horribly just watching the game, <laughs> seeing the collisions and all of that. It, oh. Yeah. It, no, it'd be definitely interesting to, to, mm. to see. Is it, sure. Do you think maybe the, the injuries are rehabbed better? Do you think... Uh, like, what, how's your opinion coming through, uh, like, from SG Ball mm. uh, to now and, and just seeing the, like, an injury management sort of side of things? How, how does it all change? Well... I'll go back to the injury management side, but uh, but even injuries, I, I, I like to, when people say, you never saw a pec injury um, 10 years ago, like, it just, like, from, from reports, it just didn't happen. Didn't happen yeah. And and the way, you know, I don't know if it's our pre-seasons, um, you know, over the last, how they've evolved over the last, you know, eight years, and um, how, how they've changed, it, it's hard for me to say, because, you know, I haven't been around that long, but, um, yeah, different type of injuries are, are creeping into the game that probably weren't around... Um, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And as for injury management, it's obviously gotten better, you know, sp- mm. with, with sports science and um, I shouldn't say more qualified people, but obviously more um, research and and, um, and knowledge that's around the game now. So I think the injury management has definitely improved, but um, 
But off the back of that, I think there's new injuries that are surfacing, which probably haven't in the past. So yeah, mm. and probably the less of the you know the magic sponge was the magic sponge <laughs> that they used to bring yeah. out back in the eighties, and just uh, everything yeah. will be sweet. Magic water. And the magic <laughs> water. <laughs> That's what we're getting around. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of that, and there's um, what's happening, especially it's happening in the news. Oh. It's time for the news right now, guys. Time for the news. <laughs> It's time so, for the news. Plenty happening in the news today, Liam. Yeah, there was plenty happening in the news today. The first one, which is a, a pretty huge one, is that uh, Greg Inglis has announced that he is set to retire immediately. He's, um, yeah, it's a shame to see uh, the great man go out in this way, you know, having only played, I think, two games this year, only playing till round two and kind of going through a few injuries over the last few years. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a, it hit me pretty hard. I was like... This is GI. He's always going to be around, and um, yeah, he's done. he's gone. He's, he's done. He, he played for a long time. What was it like to play against uh, GI? I only managed. I think I played three games maybe against him. Yeah. So I, I already meant, you know, the the back end. I should say of his career, even though he's still obviously a great player of um, our game. Um, you know, he's tough. I probably tackled him. You know, I, I remember the first time actually. It was 2016 um, down there at ANZ. I came on to play back row. He was playing fullback. And um, it was actually Rossi's first try. That, do you remember that? Remember he ran past Greg Inglis and he was all like, no, I I'm don't faster than Greg Inglis. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. he, I, did, like, I bet he got some did a uh, mileage on out of that. <laughs> but I, I remember one kick chase I did and I just remember, like, I think I, I, I tried to hit him with all I had and he's just this big, like, rock sold, you know, <laughs> and human man. I, I, I would hate to verse him back in his, you know, when he was coming through, fending yeah. people off. Left, he, right, and centre, untouchable at times. That's it, that left arm fend oh. was. It, I remember at the time, especially when he was coming through Origin. It was he was unstoppable. That one on Jamie Soured, Soured yeah, in mm. round one against <laughs> <laughs> George. I think I came in 2011. I think it was. It's funny that no. one's come up so many times. Oh. I've seen it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Too many people would have stopped him from that. <laughs> oh, it was. That's it. Same. I think we all would have been in Jamie's situation. Yeah. Put in orbit. Yeah, <laughs> put in orbit. I'm. I'm not too sure anyone would have really got away from that mm. one. No. Yeah, but he was like as a New South Wales. Uh, Porter obviously like he you know he brought brought so many nightmares just oh, watching yeah, tall games apart uh, and it's uh, you know it's sad to see him go I yeah. think, uh, I think especially under the circumstances he's left under you know under an injury cloud and kind of midway through a season you'd, you'd like to see a champion like that go, go out a champion top. but yeah. Yeah. oh well L- likened to the Ross dog that's yes, right yeah <laughs> 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 so similar similar careers and yeah, finishes look, the way very similar careers <laughs> yeah. it's uh but you know it's uh when injury you know injury door knocks you you got to answer it mm. i suppose now uh, we're going from one queensland legend to another which we here at the joust don't endorse we're going to do it anyway try to avoid, yeah. we've got to be quite nice to these people uh cameron smith on the weekend overtook hazem el masri to become the nrl's highest point scorer so going back to our discussion earlier about the longevity thing it's mm. i tend to forget you know how how many points Cameron Smith's accrued through his career? Because he's never been a try scorer. I think he's, he's got the least tries on the list for the highest point scorer, but he's just prolific. Yeah, he's just there. Mm. He's just there constantly. It's ridiculous. Cameron Smith, what effect does he have out in the field? Um, obviously, they've they've played they've played five games this season, one or five. He's he's their maestro. He's not. He's been their maestro for for what's it fifteen years now? Yeah, and, yeah, be about that. Queensland <laughs> maestro for fifteen years now. He's unbelievable. Just the way he just never looks tired. No. He doesn't. He never looks tired. He's always in the game. He always picks the right option, and he's he's always there or thereabouts on on kick chases. You know, even and cleaning up kicks. He's I don't know. He's he's the next immortal. He, and he's oh, hardly well, a big fella. Going to be eventually. He's hardly <laughs> a big fella what as well. So. The, 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 the accountant. The accountant. The accountant. <laughs> yeah, yes. Because he just so. but he just gets the job done and without yeah. it. Yeah. Is yeah. he? Yeah. He's something special and 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 probably rightly so deserves to be the highest point scorer. Mm. Um, rightly so. Yeah. So we thought we'd just give him a quick tip of the cap this week. And the last <laughs> item in the news this is a bit of an unsavoury one. Uh, Josh Maguire of North Queensland has uh, been fined three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and will miss no games after eye-gouging Cameron Munster. Mm. Now, I don't know about you boys, but this one's uh, thrown me for a bit of a loop because I think George Burgess got four weeks for an eye-gouge last year. There was someone else got a few weeks for an eye-gouge earlier last year, and this one kind of got nothing. So, And now you might be able to help us out with this one because the referee (laughs) asked for a formal complaint from Cameron Munster. How does that work with 
the player having to make a formal complaint. I, I would have thought... Is it, is it the same as snitching? Yeah. Is it the yeah. <laughs> well, as, a, as an interesting one, because Cameron Munster and um, Maguire are teammates mm. at, in, at Origin. At Origin, yeah. So Cameron Munster, you know, he's a young fella, he's 24. You know, Maguire's, you know, that hard head of the Queensland side. You don't want to be snitching on, <laughs> on one of your, your, your Origin, cam- um, you know, teammates. And But go, going back to the whole grading, that's a whole nother can of worms we get we get t- every year um the nrl judiciary comes in and it's about an hour and a half of of grading and and where <laughs> where it's going it changes from year to year and so i'm not sure about the precedence of of the incident but obviously they've changed something this year yeah. where instead of missing games now it's a it's an more it's a fine higher yeah. fine as yeah because well, last year I, I remember if it was a week <coughs> you could get fined 1500 so that that eradicated the week you'd have to pay 1500 if it was a low grade and so they've obviously changed i must have been listening in the, <laughs> in the hour and a half <laughs> at that time when they were talking about <laughs> eye gouging so I, it's 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 hard to comment on because there's a whole um without knowing the ins and outs of it there's a whole there's, it goes in pretty deep about yeah. about judiciary and and weeks and and fines. So. You catch up on those lectures later, you know. Just put them in, put <laughs> yeah, it at one point five times on, the speed. Get on blackboard, well, blackboard. Well, yeah. Well, I'm none from one at the judiciary, so <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I try to fight my charge, and, and I thought I did all right. And, you know. Not no, to be. No, good. Which charge was that? That was... Uh, uh, the crusher on oh, Tim oh, Glasby. Tim Gl- oh, we were, yeah, I still no. give him stick today. Yeah, I anyway. remember we were outraged oh, by Glass, that. That man. was not a two-week... Did he it was p- two weeks, wasn't it? It was two weeks. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah we right. disagreed with that vehemently. You'll oh. be glad to know. Oh. Well, give us oh, a call next time. We'll be on your legal well, team. Well, we could, yeah, we could come Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you would have got six weeks yeah. if we were. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in the news, Liam? Oh, that's all for the news this week. Now, we've got the Titans this week. We yeah. do. Um, how's how's the, the, the playing group moving forward? Yeah, obviously, it's, it's been a, a, a rough month. But, um, you know, we, we just got to stick together and... and you know, get through this this period. Uh, we 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 got the side. We we got the structure. It's about just putting them together as a whole and and collectively. Um, you know, we need to take accountability as players to to rock up each week and put our best foot forward. You know, the coaches, Brandy can only give us so much. Um, I know. You know, there's been a lot of chat about about Brandy and the coaching staff, but at the end of the day, we need to be held accountable for for our for our performance, and it hasn't been good enough in this past month. So. Um, moving forward this week, you know, we, we had pretty honest conversations today. We had we had a review. We reviewed the game, and um, you know, we, we had some pretty tough conversations about moving forward, what we need to do because, um, you know, we're, we're desperate now for a win. We can't we can't go five losses. For I sure. think it's going to be a tough year as well. I think a lot of people are quick to write off the Titans, but when you look at their forward pack, you know, they've got mm. Jai Arrow, Jared Wallace, Ryan James. Forward. They've got they've got some real quality forwards and. Ash Taylor and um, Tyron Roberts are starting to put together some game time in the halves, which they're only going to get better. So it, I think it's going to be a, a much tougher game than a lot of people think when they look at the the Titans who just won their first game on the weekend against the Panthers. Obviously, they've got the Flash Gordon as well. There. Flash Gordon, of course. Yeah. How could I forget? He's another one playing well into his 30s. <laughs> yeah, um, he's, yeah, he's been unreal. Yeah. Yeah. They've they got a quality side, like you said. Mm. It's, and they're no easy beats, so we can't go up there thinking, you know, they are going to be because that, that's a recipe for disaster. And, and we need to go out there, you know. And think putting our best foot forward and and you know trying to get stuck into them so we can get the points. For you as a back row, where do you see what, what what's your job? Where, who you, who are you going out there thinking that that's the side that for the Titans he's the man? Is, is there is there a particular person or a particular place that you really want to set your dominance? Well, f- for me or for the team, I think for yourself. For myself, it'd probably be um, you know if if I'm up against it's Ash Taylor. I think this week mm. on, on their right hand side, and you know he's a quality player. Mm. He's, I know he's been out for um, the last month or so, but came back on the weekend. Did he, he did, not? yes, he did. Um, yeah, so it will go a long way into into um, how we go in the game by by shutting him down, um, and in, in through the middle again. Jai Arrow, he's been enormous. He, he's a, he's a workhorse. <laughs> yes. so, um, you know, eradicating his good running game and working. You know, his his amount of work that he gets through will, will go a long way into. 
to hopefully winning the game. Shannon, Shannon Boyd obviously playing for the Titans as well, mm. but you've, you've uh, had some experience tackling Shannon Boyd. I remember a time in Canberra putting him down just before the line oh, yeah. uh, and, and sort of rolling him on his back. It was uh, Well, it was you did table. better than Mitch Barnett. I remember him trying oh, to tackle yeah, Shannon Boyd and well, getting knocked yeah. out. Well, Barney's from Canberra. <laughs> I think that the old mates from back there. So he just, Barney's a you know, headless chook sometimes. Yeah. He goes out there and he <laughs> Knocked him short. Yeah. That <laughs> knock sure from Boyd was one of the heavier ones I've ever mm. seen. It was, it was Barney's, Barney's 25th birthday today, so happy birthday. Hey, happy Barney. birthday, Barney. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> w- welcome to quarter of a century. That's what they're doing today. So, um, yeah, no, it, it'll be a good matchup. He's, he's, he's a good player, Shannon Boyd. He's a big body. So, I think you know, this will be a good player. litmus test. What did you say last week? I can't do the word. What <laughs> Lipton is it? Lipton test. Lipton? No, I did not say Lipton test. I, I think you said Lipton test. It'll be I a good litmus not. test, I think, for the defense this week because um, games against the Titans traditionally score pretty highly. I know last mm. year in the two games, uh, we won the second one 30-24. First one went down 33-26. So I think this will be killer. good. That was a killer to watch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a painful one. They're some pretty average games. Again, same, well, well, some exciting games. Depends yeah. which way you look at it, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think so. I think that'll be a really good uh, show of the defense. Yeah, absolutely. Because Titans seem to score against us a lot. I'm looking forward to it. And where are you going to watch uh, an away game, Liam? Why at the Commonwealth Hotel, of course. The Commonwealth Hotel is the only place to watch the away games for the Newcastle Knights. So yep. if you're uh, if you're around uh, the Commie, please jump in and uh, make sure you tune in and watch the games there. It's the best place to watch the games. You ever been to the Commonwealth Hotel? Love the Commie. Love the Commie. Wonderful yeah. club. It's, it's fantastic. What Commo, part? Commo, yeah. Commie. Like <laughs> oh, that's actually the biggest debate in Newcastle at the moment. Is Whoa. it the Commo? Is it the Commie? Commo. Yeah, well, it says oh, the commie the on the commo. front, but it's uh, but a lot of people commo, call it the yeah. commo, yeah. yeah. But uh, a lot of the playing group like going there. We know, uh, I think uh, it was KP and uh, Connor Watson, um, after they finished here, went down to the commo and uh, yeah. and had some mm. dinner. They did some great food there as well. Yeah. Mm. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's, time awesome. for, it's time for six of the best. Your six of the best. Mm. Mm. Six, of the, <laughs> six of the best uh, this week. <laughs> We decided to do back rowers, and this is just yeah. uh, when we th- we come up with the six best or what we think uh, from maybe from from the past, uh, relive something of NRL history. Last year, last week we did props, so this week having a back rower on now, we thought let's do six of the best back mm. rowers. Liam, let's kick off with you. I started with Glenn Morrison. Do you remember Glenn Morrison? He might have not. just been before. I'm <laughs> showing my age here. Glenn Morrison was. Um, oh, I remember Glenn Morrison. He was a hero of my childhood. Being a North Sydney Bears fan growing up, he um, he lit up my youth on the television screen. He played 320. 320- Four games for Balmain, North Sydney, North Queensland, Parramatta, Bradford, and Wakefield Trinity. Yeah, and he ha- remember he had this blonde, blonde like hair, yeah. surfy almost hair, and yeah, he was playing he, on the North Shore. And I loved Glenn Morrison. He, he was played, one of my favourites. He played in the wrong generation because he would have been great on Supercoach because he had these stellar oh. stellar stats each week. Yeah, yeah. he's working. He was one of the you know the original hard working back rowers, and he was never the biggest back rower, but. He was always up there. He was On very stop. good. Yeah, Lachlan, who was your uh, back row growing up that uh, you really particularly admired? It was a hard one because when I was... Um, <laughs> it was funny. So when I was actually growing up, I was, I was playing in the halves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I only really moved into the back row when I was about 15, 16. So growing up, I was always playing in the halves and it was always, you know, Andrew Johns. Well, everyone loved Andrew Johns. Mm. And then... Um, yeah, so it, I never really watched the back rows, but then... As obviously, you know, the Steve Simpsons and the Ben Kennedys of the Knights, I always, you know, looked up to them as coming through in that later period. And then, um, you know, you even had the guys like, like Nudo who were there who at the time was playing some good footy. And, and Chris Houston was a lot. He was there mm. when I was when I was coming through and I, I was, I was um, lucky enough to play some games with him. So, yeah, there, there's been a few good back rows. Tarek Sims taught me a lot. Um, and then Aidan Guerra coming in, you know, origin back row. So, you know, they've all been really good on my career. Mm. That's fantastic. Oh, but for mine, it has to be like Simo. As you mentioned, like he was just something else. He was that really just tough as nails, hard worker, really mm. understated sort of guy. Like you spoke to him, you see him on interviews, sorry, and he's just, you know, there, he wasn't like a boisterous character mm. or alive, but out in the field, like he was just this absolute workhorse. And, he, and you know, his rep career showed that as well, playing yeah. uh, many games for Australia and... Uh, and uh, New South Wales. He did, yeah. Who's your other choice? My last one was um, Paul Sirenen. I remember growing up watching Paul Sirenen. He played a lot of prop, but mostly in the second row. And he was just a, he was just a behemoth of a human being. Mm. He was absolutely enormous. And he kind of, he'd started balding, but strapped his head up. And uh, he always made me want to, I never played in the, in the forwards really until under 13s. And that was it. Just one year. And I still wanted to take my head up like Sirenen. 
Is that why you tapped your head up? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <It was laughs> like, like zero. No, like zero. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll do a quick wrap of the lower yeah, grades before we finish. Please do. Now, r- the Canterbury Cup team won against the Sea Eagles 18-14. They've got the Bears next week away. Harold Matz won versus the Bulldogs 22-16. Um, they haven't been announced their next game because it's in the finals, I believe. Jersey Flag won 62-6 against Manly. They've got North Sydney away again. And the Tasha Gale Cup lost against the Tigers. So oh. waiting to see what will happen for the next week of the finals for them as well. Mm. They've been going so well, Tasha mm. Um Yeah. And it's upsetting here they lost the first week of the finals. They've had is. such a good run in. They have had a good run in. So uh, hopefully they get a second chance. Who yeah. out of the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the first grade squad, like, looking down uh, on, on into teams like under 20s and, mm. and Harabouts, for you, who do you see coming up and going, he's one to watch? Or her, she's one to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will, in that in that twenties, I think um, there's a kid named Bradman Best. Um, I think he just turned seventeen. He, he had a knee injury um, back in the last year, and he's only he did the preseason with us, but he's in rehab a lot of the time. I think he's only second game on the weekend. He's a big kid. I don't no know way. if you've, you've seen him. He's a big seventeen year old kid playing twenties, and he scored four on the weekend. He, he, <laughs> Something he, else. He, he, yeah, he's a class above. So. Um, him and there's another kid just come over from New Zealand called Simi. Um, so is it his first just or Simi? Simi. All right. Simi. Is it like Cher? What is he going with Simi? Uh, Simi. Oh, I like just Simi. Yeah. Sorry, Simi. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Simi. Yeah. Anyway, so. I'm sure Simi listens to shows. So yeah. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll call a, you up and he's only it. 17 too. So there's some there's some good talent. And then in the reserve grade side, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of some young boys or young men, I should say, coming through. So. Um, yeah, there's some good talented um, blokes coming through the ranks, which are always in good stead. Beauty. Fantastic. Yeah. Good luck on the weekend against the Titans. Thank Thanks you very guys. much for joining us. Appreciate uh, it. It's been a pleasure having you. If you like the Joust, uh, please like us on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, Twitter. Have I mentioned everything? ITunes, Instagram. Instagram, all those social pipes. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Thanks again, Fizzy, for coming Enjoy. on. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, guys.